So I was looking up words in the keyword concordance and a specific passage concerning the days of Christ, concerning the elements that are there. <clears throat> as far as gold, silver, precious stones, that which remains and withstands the test of fire. Um, it's beautiful because what remains is what we're requited for. That which is done in the body, whether good or bad, we are going to be requited. It's not a judgment according to Acts. It's not a judgment according to sin. It's not a judgment according to anything but what we do in the body. In the sense of, from a heart standpoint, how we treated our fellows and treated people from the heart. Um, injuries are done, even in the body of Christ. And God needs to expose all that at the days of Christ in order for us to receive our wage. And our wage will be an allotment given um, in the body of Christ for a position among the celestials, because that's our calling. So as I was looking up the word or that passage concerning that, gold, silver, precious stones. There's wood, hay, stubble, earthenware, things like that, that'll burn up, <clears throat> combustible material. But there's the ones that are remaining, which is gold, silver, precious stones. So I've seen the word gold. I said, well, I got to do a word study on this. It's a trans-administrational word in the sense of being an element that God uses in his universe. Uh, he uses it for the New Jerusalem. In the book of, a, book of the Unveiling, gold is mentioned a lot. And <clears throat> I bring out the passages from Matthew to the Unveiling and give you an idea what this word is all about. But the Greek is C-H-R-U-S-O-S. -S. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's, um, I'm going to start out by giving the word gold, the scripture references, and then, because I broke it down, then the word golden, because both words are associated with that Greek word. Nice and quiet back here this morning, which is really good. Usually there's dogs barking and shit happening by nine o'clock in the morning. beautifully quiet no airplanes flying or nothing um, okay so the scripture references starting in Matthew 2 11 and coming into the house they perceived a, the little boy with Mary his mother and falling they worship him this is speaking of Jesus at his birth and opening their treasures they bring him approach presents gold and frankincense and myrrh Matthew 10, 9. You should not be acquiring gold, nor yet silver, nor yet copper in your girdles. No beggar's bag for the road. Matthew 23, 16. Woe to you blind guides who are saying, Whoever should be swearing by the temple, it is nothing. Yet whoever should be swearing by the gold of the temple is owing. 1 Timothy 2, 9. Similarly, women also are to be adorning themselves in raiment decorous, decorously with modesty and sanity, not with braids and, and gold or pearls or costly vesture. James chapter five, verse three, your gold and silver corrode and their venom will be for testimony against you. And the venom will be eating your flesh as fire. You hoard in the last days. Unveiling chapter nine, verse seven. This is speaking of those locusts, those supernatural beings that are under, I believe, in the submerged chaos, <clears throat> when that is opened up, the fumes come out and those locusts come out of that place where they are ruled by their ruler, Abaddon or Apollyon. And the likeness of the locusts are like horses made ready for battle and on their heads are as it were, wreaths of gold 
and their faces are, as it were, human faces. These are terrifying beings, and they're going to be released on the earth during the tribulation. And they will go after every single one who have that emblem of the wild beast. Unveiling chapter 18, verse 12. A cargo of gold and of silver and of precious stones and of pearls and of cambric and of purple and of silk and of scarlet, including also every kind of citron wood and every ivory utensil and every utensil of most valuable wood and of copper and of iron and of marble. I think this speaks of that, that city, Babylon, where they hoard, as it said in James there, they hoard in the last days and millions and billions and billions of, of precious materials being hoarded in that city, Babylon. Future Babylon, which is coming swiftly. Acts chapter three, verse six. Yet Peter said, silver and gold I do not possess. Yet what I have, this I'm giving to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. Acts chapter 17, verse 29. The race, then, is inherently of God. We ought not to be inferring that the divine is like gold or silver or stone or sculpture of art and human sediment. So they worshipped everything in Athens, and Paul went in there and saw what they worshipped. They even had whatever they were worshiping, a stone or whatever, to the unknowable God, a statue or whatever. This unknowable God, I believe, was the true God because they could not know him. But they worshiped everything. Acts chapter 20, verse 33. I covet no one's silver or gold or vesture. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 13. Now, if anyone is building on this foundation, this refers to the body of Christ. Gold and silver precious stones. This is the passage I was looking up. Wood, grass, straw, each one's work will become apparent. For the day, which is the day of Christ, will make it evident. For it is being revealed by fire. And the fire, it will be testing each one's work, what kind it is. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4. Having the golden center and the Ark of the Covenant covered about everywhere with gold in which was the golden urn having having the manna and Aaron's staff which germinates and the tablets of the covenant <clears throat> first peter 1 7 that the testing of your faith much more precious than gold which is perishing yet being tested by fire may be found for applause and glory and honor at the unveiling of jesus christ first peter 1 8 18. Being aware that not with corruptible things with silver or gold are you rans were you ransomed from your vain behavior, handed down by tradition from your fathers. See, tradition, that's religious. And they hand it down continuously, continuously, all these traditions. First Peter 3.3. 3, Who's a doorman? Let it not be the outside of braiding ought into the hair and of decking with gold or putting on of garments unveiling 318 i am advising you to buy of me gold refined by the fire that you should be rich and the and white garments that you may be clothed and the shame of your nakedness may not be made manifest and i salve to anoint your eyes that you may be observing Unveiling chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was clothed with purple and scarlet and gilded with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, brimming with the abominations and the uncleanliness of the prostitution of her and the earth. This definitely speaks of Babylon. Unveiling 21, 18. And the, build, and the building material in its wall is jasper and the city is clear gold like clear glass this is the new jerusalem unveiling 21 21 and the 12 portals are 12 pearls each one of the portals was respectively of one pearl 
and the square of the city is gold, clear as translucent glass. 2 Timothy 2.20 I believe we will get a first, first VIP tour of that New Jerusalem in our immortal frames. We will see it before it descends to the new earth. If not, um, add to it or help in the sense of its construction, but I believe it's already being done by messengers. So, but we will get a really good tour of it before it comes down to the new earth. 2 Timothy 2.20 Now in a great house there are not only gold and silver utensils, but wooden and earthenware also, and some indeed for honor, yet some for dishonor. Okay, the word golden. Unveiling 1.12 And I turn about to look for the voice which spoke with me. And turning about, I perceive seven golden lampstands. Unveiling 121, the secret of the seven stars, which you perceive in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are messengers of the seven ecclesias, and the seven lampstands are seven ecclesias. Unveiling 113, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the son of mankind, dressed in a garment, reaching to the feet, and girded about its added at the breasts with a golden girdle, unveiling 15.6. And out of the temple came the seven messengers who have the seven calamities, dressed in clean resplendent linen and girded about their chests with golden girdles. And the last one, unveiling eight, verse three. And another messenger came and was standing at the altar, having a golden thurible and much incense was given to him that he shall be imparting to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne.